Hello React Native Developers, what is going on? This episode is an interesting variant of a problem we know and love. So welcome to Can It Be Done in React Native? This week, we build a nice throwback. Hello React Native Developers, I hope you are well. William here recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. In this week's episode, we are looking at the Rewind app that turns your iPhone into an iPod classic. So you have this uh, fantastic click wheel available with, through the touch screen of your phone and then the user interface that reminds you of uh, an iPod classic. I first came across such an example by following Elvin on Twitter, developer extraordinaire is what is is developing uh, such an app in Swift. And as you can tell from his tweets, the app looks absolutely extraordinary. It's uh, one of the coolest thing I've seen in 2019. Uh, it's an uh, absolute incredible job. And obviously this raises the question, can it be done in React Native? And when I first saw this example, I got really excited. I got really excited for three reasons. The first reason is that obviously this is involving some sort of trigonometry. Examples involving uh, trigonometry are always extremely fun to do because you really start with a piece of paper and your pen, right? Sketching down the um, circular click wheel, writing down some equations. And hopefully if you your equations are correct, you just type it, type it in in the code and it just works. And I think this is one of the most pleasurable experience as a software developer that just that we get to work with a pen and paper and then just uh, inputting the result into the source code and it just works. I, I just love it. And the second reason I got really excited is that the iPod Classic is a, an object with which most of us have some sort of uh, emotional connection. I really used to love my uh, iPod Classic. And by judging of the retail, the resale price of such a device now on eBay, um, I guess I'm not the only one. It really feels that a lot of people have a, uh, an emotional connection with um, with this device. So it's just an interesting example to, to build. I think that, uh, uh, yeah, it's just a nice throwback, right? And the last reason I got really excited is that this cannot be published on the Apple Store. Uh, you cannot even get it for a test flight, I think. And I just think it's just an interesting example to build with a, a technology such as React Native where we're not locked in into one platform. So we can, you know, potentially still publish it on the web, uh, Android, surely. So just a great fit uh, to use React Native here. So how would we do this in React Native? So let's go back to our trigonometry. So this is the uh, three coordinate systems we're gonna use. We have the Canva coordinate system from uh, React Native. So you have the X and Y axis. All values are positive within the viewport of the screen. We have the uh, Cartesian uh, coordinate system where the, so you have a center on the screen. Here it's gonna be the center of our click wheel and you have uh, plus x, plus y, minus x, minus y. And these are the equations on how we can move from one to the other. And then we have the polar coordinate system where we have x and y value on the Cartesian coordinate system and we get a radius and an angle alpha. So these, we've done it already in previous episodes these are the equations that allow us to go from one coordinate system to the other. In fact, what will happen is that we're going to get X and Y as a touch value from the pan gesture handler. And we need to translate this into a polar coordinate, into an angle. So we need to know by how much radiant we moved our finger across the click wheel. So we're going to transform this into the Cartesian coordinate system and then into the um, polar coordinate system. And so we're going to calculate the delta alpha in radiant. And if we go in redash, all these equations 
are uh, built in. So we're going to use these functions directly to uh, automatically get from x and y value the angle, uh, or the rotation of the finger essentially. So how are we going to calculate the rotation of the finger? So we're going to look at each frame at the delta on the x and y value. So we have x and y, which are the position of the finger at the current frame. And we have x and x0 and y0, which are the x and y position at the previous frame. So we need to calculate, oops, we need to calculate what is the angle for this delta. So by how much did we rotate between two frames? So we, let me just write it down here. So we have x and y and we have yeah x0 and y0. So we can get a0, which is the angle of the previous frame based on the polar coordinate system. So starting from, from zero. So A0 is tangent of Y0 divided by X0. And A is tangent of Y divided by X. From there, the delta is going to be, so DA is A0 minus A. And the reason is that, yes, we go from left to write on the iPod click wheel for positive values. So maybe we can just uh, test some examples. If let's say A0 equals, um, let's say um, 40 degrees and A equals um, 30 degrees. So we're really moving from left to right. We know that the A equals a0 minus a equals 10 degrees. So we know that uh, the delta is 10 degrees, and then we can interpolate this uh, angle value into a uh, width. So for instance, we, we can interpolate 2 pi, which is a full rotation, to the width of the screen. And so we know that when we did a full, uh, a full uh, rotation on the click wheel, we did a full scroll of the eight of the screen. Let's try. So as you can see, uh, this is how our, um, our click wheel looks like. And we go from, because we use a uh, tangent. So the values from tangent will go from zero to pi and from minus zero to minus pi. So here, let's look at a couple of edge cases when we cross essentially into the ne uh, negative values to see, you know, if we need to handle some special edge cases. We uh, actually do need to handle uh, when we go through these uh, values. But let's try just again as an example, when we cross uh, this part of the circle. So we, we would have, for instance, and by the way, here, if we have, I mean, quickly, if we would have a0 is 30, A is 40. So we moved from right to left. Here we would have minus 10. So which is, we would uh, remove uh, a negative amount of pixels. So we would find some scr scroll back. So that's, that looks good. So let's try when we cross the axis on at this position. So we would have A0, which is, let's say 10 degrees. A, which would be minus 10. So we would have DA, which is 10 minus minus 10, which would be 10. So this would be correct. If we have A0, so it's the other direction. Here we would have minus 10 minus 10, that would be minus 20, that's correct. And by the way, so no, that was, sorry, <laughs> the first example was wrong. So if uh, I would have um, 10, 10 minus minus 10, that would be 20. So, okay, all good in this direction. Now let's look at when we cross the axis at this position, this is where it gets tricky. 
So let's just write one example. So E0 would be uh, 170 degrees and A would be, so if we move 20 degrees here backwards, so it would be minus 70 degrees. So if we run the A, uh, A0 minus A, it would be uh, 170 plus, so minus minus 170, so plus 70, 170, which would be um, 340 degrees. So obviously that's not uh, the value we are looking for. And let's do the opposite. So if we have 170 and 70, 170 would be minus 170 degrees, minus 170 would be minus 400 degrees. So how can we uh, here calculate if we cross this axis, how can we calculate the proper value? So the way we are gonna do it, and by the way, uh, that's how I solve this problem, but I would be very interested to know if there is another uh, solution to, to this problem that might be actually a bit cleaner. I mean, it's pretty clean, but just that, you know, I have to write a couple of conditions. Maybe there is like a mathematical tool that will uh, uh, calculate this more efficiently. I don't know, just, just let me know. But the way we can solve this problem is that we're gonna look if the absolute value of dA is greater than pi, so greater than one, uh, 180 degrees. If it's the case, we look at the sign of A0, if it's positive or negative. If it's positive, we do two pi minus the uh, dA, and it will give us the proper value. If it's if it's positive, if it's negative, we would do um, minus two pi uh, minus this value, which will also give us the proper value. So if the uh, absolute value is greater than pi and A0 is greater than zero, we know that we essentially, the result is um, 2 pi minus dA and if A0 is lower than 0, the result is minus 2 pi minus dA. So here if we do 2 pi minus uh, so 360 minus uh, 300, that gives us 20, 340. If we do uh, minus 360 minus minus uh, 340, so it's gonna give us minus 20. So it's gonna be uh, minus 360 plus three, uh, 340. Minus minus equals plus. So that's how we're gonna calculate the uh, values for the click wheel. So we're going to have a alpha animation value, which will contain the um, progress of the click wheel in radians, which we can interpolate into a, a, a distance, for instance, in the case of the scroll view. And then on top of it, or more or less at the <laughs> um, um, bottom of it, we're going to have the buttons, which are going to be a parents to the click wheel. So we're gonna have a tap gesture handler, which has as a children a pan gesture handler. So we'll have no conflict between the touch because if a touch is not recognized by the tap gesture handler, it will simply go down to the pan gesture handler. The pan gesture handler is handling all this uh, processing. So we are gonna have this square here, this big square, which is our tap gesture handler we're gonna have the state of the gesture to know when we tapped on the on the area. And then we're gonna look at the X and Y value of the tap gesture handler to uh, find out which zone uh, we tapped in. Did we tap in this zone? In this case, 
it would be the top command, the menu button. Here would be the play forward button. Uh, the center one would be the OK button, this one. Oh. Here we would have the play, pause button at the bottom and the play forward on the right side. So this is how we're going to handle the click wheel. Some just nice trigonometry and looking and some geometry in the tab gesture and learn to know uh, which button we, uh, we tapped. So that's for the click wheel. Then for the screen part, we're going to... So here, as you can see from the demo, we have basically what looks like a, a stack navigator, but it's wrapped around some UI, right? Because of the click wheel. So we're going to use... Uh, uh, custom React Navigation, um, a custom navigator, but it's basically a, a stack navigator that which we modify. So the stack router, but we just modify it to have uh, to be able to wrap a React component around the screen. But the uh, the screen is really a, a stack navigator, as you you can see it here from the demo. And we're gonna have to receive two animation values, the alpha value, which is the progress of the click wheel, the command animation value, which is going to contain the state of the tap gesture. So we're going to receive maybe uh, the animation value is going to be top, meaning we, we tapped the top button. And this will enable us to handle navigation, go back, play, pause music, and so on. And then we have to build some sort of a UI. So you see here we have this list. So we're going to look at the alpha animation value to interpolate which row on the list is active. And we're going to also need to uh, implement some sort of uh, uh, scrolling, meaning if we select an item which is outside the viewport, we need to translate the viewport nicely, exactly like this on the video, just as it would work on, uh, on uh, real iPod. So a lot of uh, fancy uh, interpolations and translations in order to, to get this uh, small uh, GUI working. So what do you guys think? Can it be done in React Native? Let's have a look. And before we get started, one thing, if you are interested to learn the fundamentals of gestures and animations in React Native, I recommend you check out my online course at startreactnative.dev. My goal with this course is to provide you with all the tools and knowledge necessary in order to build incredible user experiences that run at 60 FPS, even on low-grade Android devices. Hopefully, when following this course, the examples I'm building on the Can It Be Done in React Native series should feel absolutely trivial. In this course, I explain all the fundamentals, give you all the primitives you need to know in order to build the great examples that we build on the Can It Be Done in React Native series. So if you're interested to learn the fundamentals, I recommend you check it out. I start reactnative.dev. All right, guys, let's get started. So here I have a boilerplate project, which you can download in the video description in case you want to follow along with this example. And it really starts with the create iPod navigator, which is a custom uh, React navigation navigator for the iPod. And it's basically here I just cut and paste from the stack uh, navigator from React Navigation. This is a, a stack navigator. The only difference is that we want to wrap around the navigation component, which is here, this one's called screen. We just want to wrap around this UI that you see here on the right side. But other than that, it's just, so I just create a custom navigator to have this, this customi customization here of being able to wrap the UI around the screen. But other than that, it's a, uh, uh, it's a stack navigator. And uh, <laughs> I built some uh, cute little components. So you see here the uh, time and also the battery level is actually synchronized with the uh, actual battery level of the device. It just looks uh, kind of uh, cute. So we're going to do this in a couple of steps. Uh, let's say three, four steps. Let's say four steps. Step one, we're going to implement the click wheel, calculate the uh, radiant value as explained in the first part of the video and then implement so that's the first step the second step is going to be to implement the touches and be able to recognize uh, one of the five touches so uh, center top left right bottom once we've done step two so the click wheel is essentially fully implemented we're going to tackle the ui part 
and we're going to implement the scroll view. So making looking at the alpha value to see uh, if an item is uh, selected, is active, uh, implementing the navigation command based on the touches of the click wheel. And also we need to uh, scroll items when the row is active, but outside the viewport, we need to scroll the view like it would on the uh, iPod classic. So let's get started with the click wheel, which we have here. So we have the center view, which is this rounded uh, black view you see here. The button, which is empty, but this is where we're going to implement uh, the tap touch recognition. And so you see, I already have the regions of the tap gesture handler marked where we're going to, uh, you know, detect. So when we look at the tap, we tap, we're going to look at the X and Y value and detect uh, which button we tapped. If we tapped outside the zones uh, that we're interested in, we're going to simply ignore the touch. So that's a different type of uh, state we can have in the, in the tap gesture handler. We can have undetermined, either nothing has been touched or we touched an area which is shouldn't be active or center, left, right, top, bottom. So we are going to start by adding a pan gesture handler to get the X and Y value. So the pan gesture handler is a children of the bottom component so that the tap gesture handler is a parent of the pan gesture handler so that a, when a touch uh, is recognized it's caught by the tap gesture handler. When the gesture is not recognized as a touched, it's passed down to the pan gesture handler. And the first child of a pan gesture handler needs to be an animated view. So I'm going to put an absolute fill position. And we need to create a gesture handler, which we can get uh, from Redash. Redash has a helper function to, sorry about that. So we can use on gesture event. We're gonna need the X, Y value, state of the gesture. And I can create these values also using um, a helper function from Redash, which is called use values, and I can set here the default values would be zero zero and state dot undetermined. So state we get from pan gesture handler. Now we can we need so we get x and y. We need. Uh, dx and dy. So we're going to get, so we need for each frame to calculate the diff value of x and y. There is a diff function in reanimated. Diff um, is only returning the difference between the last time the node was evaluated. Here we really need to calculate it for every frame. So we would put it into a, a use code block. I, in Redash, we also have a helper function for that. I can show it to you here. So it's called use diff. So we simply run diff in the use code hook. So we have the a diff value for every uh, frame and not just any evaluation. So we would have dx is use diff from Redash on the X node no dependencies, dy, same for dy. And we can calculate, um, so now we need to calculate a0 and a. So first maybe we need x0, I mean x0 is uh, y minus dx and y0 is y minus dy. So let me import 
these values. So now that we have x0 and y0, we can calculate uh, a and a0. So a0 is, so we need just to convert uh, x0 and y0 into the polar coordinate system using the equations I just showed in the introduction video. In Redash, we have a helper function to convert these values automatically. So we have Canva to Polar, which takes uh, Canva coordinates from React Native and transforms them into Polar coordinates. And we need to give it the center of the click wheel, which would be which we have here, which is just the size of the click wheel divided by two for X and Y. So just can pass center here as a parameter. We need to do the same for A. Oh, so we get as a result, you see it here, alpha and radius. So I just use alpha here. And here, so same for X and Y. Now we need to calculate D a, so uh, maybe let me just move this one here. So the A, and um, we can just create a function called delta. We give a zero and a as parameter. So I can just write it here. So delta, so we get a zero as an animated node. Um, a also, okay. So we got d a is as we wrote previously, a zero minus a. And now we need to look at the conditions also we wrote during the intro. So we need to look if dA is greater than pi. So greater than, so absolute value of dA, sorry, is greater than pi. And then we need to look, if not, we just return dA. If the absolute value of dA is greater than pi, is a zero positive or negative and so now we look is uh, da greater than zero so if it's the case let's what did we write down if d a zero is greater than zero we subtract 2 pi, so 2 pi minus da. So we would have 2 pi minus da, and if not, it's minus 2 pi. Um, minus da, so that looks good. Here, we're gonna, so, in the iPod navigator, we are gonna create two animation values, one for the button command and one for the um, for the click wheel value. So we're gonna create alpha and we can use use values default is zero. And we can pass it as parameter of the click wheel. We can do the same also with command, which is going to be the animation value that contains the command. So zero, sorry. So we have alpha command. Default value for command is command is an enum containing the different possible state for the uh, touch command and default is undetermined. So we pass this to the click wheel. So I just write it down here quickly. So alpha is an animated node uh, value, sorry, of because of, it's actually what we need to update of number and command is animated 
value of command perfect so here we have alpha command so now we can write uh, use code hook up no dependencies and we do a set of alpha we just add uh, the a to alpha so we add alpha so alpha is alpha plus the a and um, yes and what we can do maybe is add a block here to try to debug the value so i'm gonna debug alpha just to see what we have so i need to import debug and block i love that we have uh, automatic imports now so let's have a look so i should log here alpha so it's zero i so i can already tell that to pi ah no okay it seems to be working let's just to make it easier to debug convert it into degrees so we have two degrees we can convert ah we have a helper function from redash to convert into degrees so we have zero and i have a full rotation 360 a bit more here yeah perfect uh and go back so we have back to zero that's actually pretty good so it shouldn't go to negative values so here we can add um, maximum value of zero and what we want to do here also is to only uh, have a delta if the gesture is active so we can add if state of the gesture is active we return the delta if not we want uh, the delta to be zero so we return x and same for y and yeah that looks pretty good so i'm going and minimum value is zero so the wheel part of the click wheel is working now let's do the clicking so we have the button uh, wrapper which does nothing for now and uh, we are going to use a tap gesture handler so tap gesture handler we first child needs to be an animated view and we can give the children so we here use an absolute position we need a gesture handler and exactly actually like for the pan gesture handler we need the x y value so to know in which which button we're tapping and the state of the gesture to know when we tap some somewhere so gesture handler um, okay let's first create x y state so using use values so we have zero, zero, and state undetermined. And we have our gesture handler um, using on gesture event. So x, y, state. Perfect. So now we need to use a use code. hook I'm gonna remove this debug value here I think 
looks okay. So when the state equals end, so meaning a touch has been successful, we need to look at the region at the x and y value. So we'll have five uh, if else conditions, one for each button, and uh, yeah, so if the state is ending, we, uh, so for instance, if x and y is in region, so x, y, and then region, so here I have regions, um, let's say, let's do the center one first. So we have the size of the gesture handler, we divide it by three, so it gives us the squares we need to have, so the top left square it is at, would be at zero, zero, the menu square, so the top one would be at x equals button size, y zero, and the button one would be at x here, starting here, x is button size, y is here also, so y is button size. So is in region, um, so we give x, y, and so is in region, let's say center. If it's the case, we can set, uh, the command to command center. If not, let's say it's undetermined for now. And this is, if this works, we will do it for each button. So this means we're gonna need to build the is region function. And let's have a debug call on the command value to see if it's set correctly. So now, okay, we need to import these guys and we need to create the uh, is in region function. So set, we need to pass command as parameter, which we have here. And we pass it down here. It's perfect. Um, okay, we need to import debug and let's create is in region. So we get X, which is an animated node. We get Y and we get a region which is x number y number okay oh. um so we return we need um so a couple of conditions, two, one, two conditions for X, two conditions for Y. So we need Y to be greater or equal to, so we need X, sorry, to be greater or equal to region X and to be less or equal than region X plus button size and we need the same for um, so I made I did this wrong and we need the same for Y up if this works let's have a look so here I tap so it's uh, unrecognized. I tap at the center, it's recognized. Perfect. Uh, oh, yeah, yes. If 
it's not recognized, we can set it to undetermined. So undetermined, undetermined, recognized, non-recognized, recognized. That's uh, great. So our function works. Now let's do it for every button. So here, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be tedious, but let's uh, let's get through it. So equal no if actually I, uh, you could build it recursively with an array but let's uh, let's do it uh, manually for now uh, so if is in region top we set the command top if not we look if it's in region bottom And if not, we check if it's in the region left. And if not, so center, top, bottom, left, and then right. So, and if not, we check if it's in the region right. And if not, it's undetermined. Huh, no way that I didn't do a syntax error on this one. Okay, cool. <laughs> so let's have a look. So here I tap the top, uh, the center, sorry. Here I tap unrecognized. I tap left. I tap so bottom, top don't work. Right don't work, left seems to work somehow. So left, center, top don't, doesn't work, right doesn't work, bottom doesn't, it's not working. So if is in region center, set center, if is in region top, set command top, is greater or equal x plus x. Oh, so here I have it wrong, it's y, well, okay. So hopefully now it should work. So center, top, bottom, left, right. Everything works. Perfect. So here we have a fully functional click wheel. So now let's do part three and four, which is going to be to tackle the uh, UI using these animation values, which are going to drive the scrolling of the list, uh, showing which row of the list is active and the whole navigation going back to the menu, going to a new screen and so on. So, oops. If we go back here to the iPod navigation, we have our alpha and command value, which are now completely uh, driven from our click wheel, we need to pass them as parameter to the screen so that in the navigation, we know how to uh, react to these commands. Oh, no, not status bar. This one here, screen. So if I go to this component where I define all my screens, so you see I have a menu, which is a list of items with an icon. Here I have like a list of also of an item with a, a picture. And I have also the player component, which is like the music player, which we have here, which is done using the uh, audio player from Expo. So here injected props receives command and alpha as parameter. Just gonna copy and paste it from here. So these are the injected props. Just can. So we're going to receive it as parameter for every screen. So alpha command, and this means. So let me do this quickly. Up. Up. And this means that we can pass, for instance, to the list component these two parameters. And we're going to use it to drive the list, which row is active, 
and uh, also navigating back and forth to different screens. So here it is. Um, okay. In the list item, so here we're going to receive also so x and y. So a, a y and command, uh, ah, alpha and command. Just quickly here. And the first thing I'm going to do here, I think, is um, so you see, I'm just having a container displaying a list of items. Um, I'm going to convert alpha into a y value, into a scrolling value, because this is a sc scrollable uh, list. So I'm going to create a y value and I'm going to interpolate alpha input range goes from um, 0 to to pi and output range goes from zero to at two pi the value here you can choose the sensitivity you want but here i would like maybe to go through the whole viewable list by doing a full revolution of the click wheel so that would be screen size but which is because here is the screen is a square actually uh, but of course you can choose uh, you know depending on the sensitivity you like these are values which I think are, are working pretty good and then one thing we need to do so we know that um, the maximum value is zero but then we want to use diff clamp meaning as soon as we do a positive uh, delta for the angle uh, we want um, the value to not be stuck to uh, something um, let me actually check let's let's debug this one quickly why because here alpha is zero well, let's see so y goes so now if i go zero 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 okay now it works pretty well yeah no i thought we would need to use diff clamp to go to positive values immediately but because we use the max on the click wheel we don't have uh, negative values nowhere so it wouldn't uh, make sense so that's good now let's check if the um item is active or not so we're gonna add active property and the item is active if the uh, y value is in between um, item height times key so zero if it's zero uh, item height if it's one two item height if it's uh, uh, two and so between that value and that value plus item height and so if we go in item we can add the active property which is an animated node that goes from zero that is either zero or one and i can use it here to set maybe the background color of the row and so here i'm gonna have background color so background color is uh if it's active it's blue and if not it's white so i've defined these colors here so I have used process color from React Native to transform a string color into a number. Um, so I need to import condition. 
So this seems to work nicely. I need to clamp. I do need to clamp the value to the maximum uh, height of the list. And I need, okay, so also here I need to have the um, active color of the icon and of the text. So for this, because these, so the icon component doesn't uh, animate natively, the text also is, uh, doesn't seem to not, so it seems to trigger uh, crossing the bridge or some sort of really uh, low, um, a very slow um, interaction with the UI manager. So this, so I created a component called active, takes the children, uh, overlays, it's a technique we used in previous episode, overlaid uh, a clone of the children with the uh, color white uh, in the property, which we overwrite. And then we simply animate the opacity of the um, overlaid element. So I'm gonna use this for the text and for the icon. So uh, active, we give the active property as parameter. Um, no, I need to wrap it here. So active, same for the text. So you see here now the icon color animates nicely. Same for the text because of the container. I need to set some style for the container. So label container. And the row animate nicely. And here, so we do need a div clamp at the end because if I go back to list, we need to add a div clamp. And not, we don't need it for zero but we need it for the maximum value because I can scroll to crazy positive values. But as soon as I scroll down, if I'm like blocked at the last row, for instance, settings, I want to go up immediately. So uh, div clamp zero and the maximum value would be items length times item height. I think this should be correct. Div clamp, we need to import. So let's have a look. So here you see I'm making many, many, many uh, revolutions. I mean, you cannot see it actually here, but then as soon as I go up, you see it goes to shuffle. If uh, we were not using div clamp, if I do uh, 10 revolution in one direction, I would need, before going from settings to shuffle, I would need to do uh, 10 revolution in the other direction. So here div clamp is perfect. So now let's do the navigation so that when we tap the OK button, you see here common one, we go actually to the screen. You see that here I have the on press property where we navigate to the screen and uh, giving it some parameters which are defined here from the screen list. So you see, for instance, here I have like, uh, we go to the screen player and then we give some parameters for the music player to, to be able to play music. So we have the on press function here in item. We receive also the command animation value. So I can just animated uh, value command. I need to check in the list that I pass it as parameter. I'm, I am not. So we need to pass it as, par as property. Now, um, so we have, so what we need to do is to have a use code hook that uh, listen to changing the command animation value, invokes the on press JavaScript function if a particular uh, command is pressed. So we're gonna create, uh, since we're gonna do this in lots of places in our code, I'm gonna create a custom hook, which we're gonna use everywhere. And we're gonna call it use on press. 
we're going to pass the command animation value. We're going to pass the target command. So for instance, here it's going to be the center button. And we're going to give as parameter the function to execute. So let's create this custom hook. Uh, so if I go here to buttons, can create use on press. So we have command, which is an animated value of command. So we have the on press function, it's just a function. And oh, we do pass, ah yeah, as a helper, we do pass the navigation because we're going to need the navigation. Uh, we're going to usually on news on press, we're going to navigate somewhere. So as a helper, we pass navigation as parameter. And so these are our functions. So we need two hooks, one to get the navigation. So navigation is use navigation. We're going to need uh, a use code. So no dependencies. If um, the command equals the target, so here we have target equals command. So if command equals target, we can call JavaScript. So we call on press and we pass the navigation as parameter. So we do on press and pass navigation as parameter. Once the JavaScript call has been executed, we reset the command state to um, undetermined. So set command undetermined because we don't want to execute it more than one time. And that would be, so we need to export this function. And so if I go back in item, we can import it here. So let's have a look if I press playlist. I think here what happens is we forgot to add the condition. We use on press if the command match centers, but only if the row is active. If not, we don't want uh, it to work. So maybe I can add a parameter here, which is, is uh, this touch active. So I can add it here. So we have active, which is animated node of zero or one. So if the command equals the target and the touch is active. So now we should target the proper, you see. So I go to the next screen, perfect. And even to the player, now I need to be able to navigate back. So that would be uh, done also using this use on press. So if I go back to the list, I can write use on press. I pass the command. If um, the target command would be menu, so it would be top, we would then navigate to menu. Na uh, uh, navigate to menu and active is one. I mean, maybe here I can just add a default value. So it would be adaptable, adaptable. Perfect. Let's have a look. So you see, I go to playlist, menu, and menu so I can navigate 
nicely. Now you see if I go to albums, the list is bigger than the viewport. So we need to implement the scrolling. All right, so now let's do the scrolling. So I'm gonna create an uh, animation value, which is translate Y, because we're gonna translate uh, yeah, the view on the Y axis. And so I can apply it here to the content. So I'm gonna apply the transformation. Um, so transform. Translate Y. And so we need also to know if we go up or down because we are going to increment or decrement the translation from item height every time. So we can do uh, is going up. So it's going up if the diff for the Y value is less than zero. So now we can create, so to detect if it's in the viewport, we're gonna use the same function than uh, what we did in the buttons component, right? So here we had is in region. It's uh, exactly the same thing we're gonna do here. So, is in view port. So we'll have y um, and translate y. So if it's in the view port, if, so we don't need this, if y is greater or equal than translate y and less than translate y plus the content height content height is height of the screen minus the height of the status bar so content height this looks good and so let's create the use code hook so we need a condition, no dependencies. So if it's not in viewport, uh, so why translate Y? So Y is always positive, translate Y is gonna be always uh, negative. So I'm gonna multiply uh, translate Y by minus one. I mean, I could update, it would be cleaner actually to update this condition. Um, so, multiply is in viewport not equal if it's not in the viewport no sorry if it's not in the viewport we uh, check if we're going up or down so if if we are going up so condition going up we set translate why we're going to remove uh, item height. So we're going to, because translate y is negative, we're going to use add translate y item height and the opposite. So actually, let me rewrite this uh, up if, so condition if going up, we add or we subtract translate y. I am sure that I'm missing some parentheses somewhere. Let's look. No, I don't. That's just luck. I think if I'm not, mi no, for sure I'm missing one. Or I'm, I have an extra parenthesis somewhere. So multiply is in viewport not equal. Multiply. Okay. Is in set. Um, 
do you guys see it already? So equal, let me just y multiply minus y not equal um argument oh sorry ay 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 getting tired <laughs> okay let's have a look um so if i go to songs now it scores down nicely and it scores up nicely guys i'm looking forward to talk to you soon and in the meantime happy hacking